Okay. So XML, oh XML. See, yeah. well, I just want to jump straight to it. I'm not even a fan of it. So common file formats. So this is, uh, I guess, I kind of skipped that. So we're going to talk about some common configuration files or data files, different formats. And uh, like I, I said a second ago, they're really just all plain text, um, technically, but they are, some of them have standards as to how that they're structured, and um, because of that, you'll find parsers and that kind of thing for pretty much any language. Um, but in this PowerPoint, I've got you know links to different modules or packages for Python if you want to use that for parsing. So what are they and why? Which may seem kind of obvious. You know, it's just a way for storing data and uh, sharing it. So like usually you'll either be saving data for a user with your application or maybe your application is built around simply using data. Um, so like if like a RESTful web services, which is what I was going to talk about in our last meeting, was um, a lot of times those services will respond with JSON or XML, which I'll get to in this. Um, so you might have an application that just uses those. So you may need to know how to parse one of these. Um, so these are the file formats that I'm going to go over. Uh, yeah, this PowerPoint will be uploaded to GitHub. So if you want to download it later, you can. And all these links will jump straight to the right slides. So yeah, we have uh, any files or initialization files. Uh, .dat and .sav or save, those are both just plain text, same as .txt, but um, you know they kind of have some sort of indication as to what kind of data that they're storing. So you know we'll get to that in a second. So I don't want to uh, really spoil it for now. But then there's JSON and XML, which are very similar. Uh, CSV and TSV, which are very similar. And the last one, which I actually haven't had any experience with using. Um, YAML or YMAL and that one is also similar to JSON. So any files um, like I said stands for initialization and you'll pretty much only see this used on Windows systems. Uh, there's really similar uh, you know files on Unix systems but um, any is extremely easy to read and extremely easy to parse. Um, so a lot of times it'll be used for things like storing connection settings for a database or a server. Um, so if you have like, I don't know, a chat kind of uh, application that has like asynchronous chat between clients and you may have some kind of any file that tells it, um, you know, what servers it can connect to, something like that maybe. Um, I actually have personally used any files in the past for configuring like settings. So I did um, a text editor. Well, the last text editor I made, I did a I stored the settings for that in an any file. So things like the color for the theme, like the background color, the color for uh, comments, that kind of thing. Um, so there's all kinds of ways you can use it, and then it's really easy to parse. Python has a built-in module called config parser here that um, you can use for that. It's really, really simple. So here's a little snippet uh, what an any file looks like. So yeah, comments are denoted by the semicolons and then it actually has sections that you can have. So the um, sections are denoted by the brackets, the square brackets. So you can have, you know, like I was saying, for a database you might have, you know, three or four different servers that you might could connect to, uh, not a database, for a chat application, I mean, and, you know, each of them might have their own address, the port that you would connect to, um, you know, whatever other information. So any files are really easy, and you can imagine this is really easy to manipulate for a user, for a non-programmer as well. Uh, which is why I kind of went that route with doing a, you know, like a theme or a settings file for an application. And the next two, .dat and .sav, these are really 
really basic. There's really not much to talk about there. Um, so dot dat is like a data file. Usually this is just storing like a single column of just values. So it's um, you know you're there. There is no like built-in parser. You don't have to find a package or module to parse files like this. It's literally just reading it line by line. Um, and it kind of varies, you know, you could add structure to it if you wanted, you know, you could say, all right, I want, um, you know, the, the records to be every three lines, you know, like if there's three fields or three attributes for each record. So that's kind of up to you as, um, as you're programming it or designing it. Um, so if you took programming one here with uh, Dr. Minsker, and you might have seen scores.dat or temperatures.dat. <laughs> yeah, so since these are just plain text files, I don't have like a sample or anything of them. And then SAV, it's the exact same as uh, dat, but typically this is, you would put SAV as the extension for, um, you know, some kind of save. So if you're saving the state of your application, um, so I guess you could use this as like a game save Although, I don't know, um, typically with like modern games, they're much more structured than a SAV file would be. But yeah, again, parsing is just reading it, basic file reading. So it depends on how you actually structure the file yourself. And next up is JSON. So JSON is pretty nice. I feel like I probably should have did XML before JSON because of that. But, uh, so it stands for JavaScript Oriented Notation, and uh, actually, JSON is, um, you, you actually have types that you can store data in. So like, like a programming language, you have arrays, dictionaries, or maps, um, booleans, strings, you know, all that, um, all those types. And you can store all that in there, you can nest things, so, um, let's see if I open up this wiki. Well, actually, I have an example I'll use. So, yeah, if you look at this example here, this is um, so the way they JSON denotes certain things is the brackets or the, the braces, the curly braces, are what denotes a dictionary. So, that's why you have the you know, the colon there separates the key and the value. In the dictionary so um, you have that and then everything is separated by commas if you want an array you can use the square brackets um, so most often you'll see that it pretty much boils down to like this example you have a dictionary of things and then you have some things that are lists and then ultimately they sort of terminate with just simple values um, but yeah, you can have, you know, you might have, like this example, you might have UALR.JSON at the bottom. Um, you know, maybe you're storing data on all the colleges here at UALR, or, uh, and then inside for each of those colleges, you might nest uh, information on their departments, the staff they have, um, you know, the classes they offer, things like that. So it's a very easy way of storing um, data like that, which is why it's useful for APIs and um, you know RESTful web services, like I I mentioned. Um, and then with Python, it comes with a handy JSON module, which you can uh, you know comes built in, and it is really really easy to both read and write. Uh, it's not on my thing, is it? There you go. Okay, so yeah, you can you can write JSON data with Python. It's really easy because it has extremely similar data structures, the list and the dictionary. So with the JSON module, you can use the dumps function here to uh, like dump it into JSON. You can actually open. Uh, let's see if I can find an example. Um, no, 
Well, you can you can actually use the the same way you would open a file for regular reading and writing in Python. The with like with open uh, your file name. You can actually use that with JSON too, and um, you know you treat it the same way you would a regular file handle. And then let's see. Uh, get back to where it was. Yeah, so that's you know really handy for Python. It's also easy to pass around JSON files or packets with networks. So a lot of times you'll see small packets of JSON um, being sent. And there are more you know it's just JSON. It's not actually you know having it doesn't have any kind of security around the the information you store in it so a lot of times with networks you know they would have that taken into consideration so JSON may not be used under you know depending on what you're storing but uh, yeah browsers a lot of servers communicate to the browser with simple JSON so um, yeah that's pretty much it and then XML XML is like the almost like the precursor. Yeah, it is the precursor to JSON, uh, kind of unofficially. So XML will look just like HTML. So you can see this is actually an example of one of my level files from my advanced game programming class right now. So we're using XML files to store the data for the level that we're on. Um, so basically. XML stands for extensible markup language and it's the same as HTML except you create your own tags and your own attributes so you sort of define your own data structure um, kind of format to it so in this one you can see we have there's sort of a game asset data structure that you can see and inside that there are you know a, any number of component elements with different attributes depending on what kind of component it is so all of that you can define yourself. Um, it kind of seems it, it's a lot like the whole blank, uh, blank slate effect when you're writing an XML file from scratch because <laughs> you're just making up tags. I don't know. It just it just feels a little little awkward if you've done HTML before and not XML. Um, See, so yeah, a lot of people prefer JSON to XML, but it sort of depends on what you're doing. So, um, you know, XML has a lot of uses where you're almost forced to use it. Uh, Android development uses a lot of XML, so they have predefined tags for the controls and the widgets, all the user interface tools that you'll see. Um, so if you ever use Android Studio, you'll definitely using XML um, you know but the, the good thing about XML is it is still really easy to read it, it's more readable than JSON um, and then you know for somebody who doesn't know you know the, this this might look yeah I mean I guess anyone with some common sense could probably look at this and say hey you know if I want to change the street address to 20 22 Second Street, then you know it's not that complicated. But you know, XML just kind of seems a little bit more user friendly. Um, anyway, but uh, XML it's also used as a response from you know certain APIs and web services like JSON is. So you'll see both of them kind of used interchangeably. Sometimes people like to argue about which one is better. But uh. Yeah, so like the examples there, you may use it to define the level for a game, like my teacher did. So that was that's XML. Uh, CSV, we're gonna do CSV and TSV real quick. CSV is comma separated value, so it's just rows and columns of data separated by commas. It's not very pretty to look at. So when you create a spreadsheet in Excel or uh, LibreOffice or Google Sheets, whatever, um, usually underneath it's really just a CSV file. Although in more, you know, 
recent versions of them they're like you know a little bit more than that more like csv files with extra things added but um you can export things to csv from them still but you can open csv files in any spreadsheet program and it'll load it into the columns so you might have a um you know like exercise log dot csv or something you may be logging i don't know how many push-ups you did how many jumping jacks sit-ups whatever you did uh, finances so a lot of times people will do their finances and budgeting in a spreadsheet program and you may export it to a csv file and then maybe you want to parse that with python and graph it so yeah the good thing about csv files and tsv is you can store massive amounts of data in them so a lot of times with you know uh, automatically generated data that's stored in csv files you might find like 2,000 lines of you know information sometimes a lot more than that but um, they're really easy to parse python has built-in module for that too called csv it's not a really a surprise but yeah this is actually so I'm actually using a CSV file right now to keep track of my blood pressure and this is actually a screenshot of it. So this is, uh, at the top you can put headers the same way you would in like a spreadsheet. So I have uh, the date that the, um, you know, the measurement was taken, the time, the pressure, so you know, you have like your top and your bottom, and then the uh, heart rate or pulse. So those are really easy to parse in Python and uh, actually I don't I don't have it really handy I was gonna show you um, I actually do have a program written for parsing that file and making a graph but anyway you can do that with the CSV module um, TSV it's literally the exact same thing except instead of commas you use tabs so the good thing about using tabs instead of commas is if you look at this it's just ugly <laughs> it's like a massive wall of text but if you look at this it's like oh this is actually kind of like formatted output and it's not hurtful to the eyes so it's a little nicer to read TSV than it is CSV and then apparently TSV is easier to process um, but for, Py for the sake of using with Python I don't really think it matters because you actually use the same module CSV um, CSV actually has a option where you can specify the delimiter so uh, so yeah you can tell it uh, what delimiter, delimiter to use so you know you could have like a space separated value file or whatever it might be so yeah, you don't have to find a new package or anything um, yeah and you know you might use TSV files you would really use the same way as TSV the type of data that you would store in them and you can open those in a spreadsheet program as well you can import them you can export uh, things to CSV or TSV I mean so, yeah. and last but not least is YAML at least that's how it's told it was pronounced so it stand it used to stood for uh, to stand for yet another mark of language but then they changed it to YAML ain't mark of language so that's a recursive acronym so I don't know I don't know why they called it yet another markup language at first because as you'll see it's not really markup at all it's actually um, it's very data oriented so there's an example um, so yeah, you can store lists you can store you know uh, booleans strings uh, blocks of text you can store uh, you know regular numerical data you can store all that in, y in YAML but um, you know pretty much the same way as JSON in that it uses classes or type like that but um, 
Yeah, it has like a um, weird kind of a kind of weird structure to me. I think to look at as to how it determines all those things, but I mean it is pretty simple. So um, yeah, it was based off of JSON and is compliant with it. So you can use if you know you're familiar with JSON. I don't imagine this would be very a big stretch to uh, switch to. So this example here is actually a receipt example, as you can see. So it's somebody ordering parts uh, and then those getting shipped to a certain place with a ID and then billed to uh, you know, the appropriate place. So you could use it for that. You might also store information about employees or something. These are just all random examples that I thought of. So, uh, yeah, so, and this I'm not actually for sure on, but I'd imagine you can also pass these files around on a network pretty easily, too. So, um, and it's also used as a built in, uh, some, some, um, I don't know, like frameworks use th this file format to, as like an initialization thing I've seen I think uh, like Django I believe has seen use uh, YAML file for it uh, like setting up the databases and, and things like that for your web service or web application but so yeah that was that's pretty much it let me see if I can find uh, the thing I had so this was a blood pressure Thing. And then this was a little file, a little script I wrote to run that. So, go. Uh, no, it wasn't on that. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I was using matplotlib, but um, if you don't look at like the, the code, so I'm using the CSV module. Oh, that's really tiny. Sorry. Yeah, so uses a CSV module for plotting. Sys is for getting the command line argument, and then matplotlib is for plotting. Um, yeah, here's the output. So it plots all that. Um, see, I keep a list of, of things, and it's very crude data storage. I didn't really care. <laughs> so yeah, you can open it with a CSV there. If you um, you just open the file like you would regularly, and then you can use this reader class, a reader method in the CSV module or package to open or actually parse that. So it just grabs all this, converts it to a Python list, and then stores it. So now I can just, you know, loop over that. So parsing it, not a big deal at all. Uh, the rest of this is just matplotlib doing things for plotting it. So none of that really uh, matters much, but yeah. And then, you know, actually, I actually don't edit this file directly. I just open it on Google Sheets because it's saved on Google Drive. So yeah, you can, it's stored as CSV, but you can actually edit it just like you would any spreadsheet. So it's not really, you know, you're not looking at it in its raw form like this. So um, that's kind of nice about CSV and TSV files. But uh, that's pretty much all I had. Uh, I wish I had more examples for parsing them. Um, I do have some on parsing JSON um, that was basically from the last uh, meeting. So it was, uh, yeah, using, hey, it was a little different since um, I was making requests for a web API 
this you would use this request module in Python and it actually has a built-in JSON uh, parser inside of it so you don't actually have to import the JSON module that I mentioned so this is a little bit different but um, yeah if you're if you're interested in you know using Python to parse any of these then you know, like I said these links and everything are on here so like XML um, you know, Python's got an XML module. It actually has a XML sub module. Yeah, this one for quick processing of it. So you can pass in the XML file and get the root. So XML parsing is a little bit of a pain in the neck, if I'm being honest. You get the root element, and then from for each element you parse it the same way you would a tree you can get siblings and you can get children so uh, yeah you do have to know uh, what the XML um, file that you're dealing with like how it's structured because that is up to you or whoever created the XML file so yeah that part will change a little bit so you do have to do some sort of manual parsing as far as that goes um, so yeah yeah links are on here if you're interested in using Python as far as XML goes I know for C++ there's a third party package called tiny XML um, which is free and open source but anyway that's pretty much it ran quite a bit short on those guys in the end of this room for their capstone so <clears throat> hmm. nah probably not I'm pretty excited excited to go out and create your CSV files I think the CSV is probably the one I've used the most um, as far as creating my own, JSON is probably the one I've parsed the most. And yeah, probably. Although, as far as if I'm using Python, I have like a strange tendency to want to use any files all the time now just because they're so easy to read. Like, you know, like hand somebody in any file and be like, you know, if you just want to change how it works, just edit this file. You can just read it. That's all you have to do. So, I mean, they're they're super super easy to parse. Um, the config parser. Yeah, yeah. So see, this was an example they had with. Um, different like servers you have that you could connect to or something but yeah the way you treat them in Python using this config parser module is, is really really easy so if you're storing um, if you're wanting to write to it you can create this config parser object or instance like that and then you treat it just like you would a dictionary uh, so you have the keys in like the root instance here are sections so that's why I had default bit bucket and all that and then each of those you can treat as a dictionary too and then when you want to write that to a file you do it the same way you would write to any file in Python so and then uh, reading is just as easy pass in to the read function your, the name of the file uh, it's got a bunch of things you can use like the sections if you wanted to loop through all the sections and then loop through all the things in the sections you could do that um, or you could get like specific specific things here um, let's see if I can find mm. this was the right so I had a settings file here so this was for the text editor that I made and I used an any file 
So I had a section for the editor, a section for uh, Python, since I, I made the editor specifically for Python, which is probably not a surprise. And then this was the colors that it was using um, and extensions that you could add to it. And then also had, yeah, I also used any for the themes. So in the themes, you know, it was as simple as this. So if you user wanted to create their own theme or edit the theme, it could do it. And then from there, if you're using the config parser module, if you want, like in this case, I had a graphical user interface or GUI. Um, later, what I ended up doing was using a color picker um, to actually allow the user to change the values and save those files without actually editing the uh, raw files. So. I don't even know if this will actually run right now, but we'll see. Um, yeah. So if I go to File, Preferences, this is a window I made. All these things are pulled from the settings here. And it looks really, really tall up there for some reason. But yes, yeah, so these are like the themes. And uh, for whatever theme you pick, it sets the colors down here, and then if you wanted to change that, you change it, and uh, you know you would hit OK, hit Save, and it would actually change it in the corresponding uh, any file. So yeah, config files are are pretty nice when you actually start using them in a real context like that, and allows a lot of flexibility too for users. But uh, Anyway, hopefully you are a little bit more excited about configuring things or just storing data. I should have called it data files or just files. Just talk about all the files. Dot pi, dot cpp. You know. <laughs> so, anyway, <clears throat> I guess uh, we'll call it quits from there.